Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're taking a look at Tiny11 2025. Now this build of Tiny11 is not actually created by NT Dev. it was created by, I can't even remember their name, I'll make sure to put the link in the description. I already do have one thing against this OS, and I'll get to it while we're installing. The one thing I have against this OS is how I actually had to download it. So it was on their website, like most ISOs are, and then I clicked it, and then it took me to one of those you earn money when people click your links advertisement websites and it made me read an article before I could even access the download link so that is already strike one against this operating system that's how the developer intended they're trying to make money off clicking links and it is just putting a absolute terrible spin on the user experience but I digress here we are in the setup of tiny 11 2025 again we're only what five days into 2025 now and we already have tiny 11 made in 2025 as you can see, this background here is a like the Windows 11 default wallpaper, but with a uh, red hue to it. That's really all it is. Same thing for the Windows background here. Uh, let's go ahead and install this OS. I'm very eager to see what they come, what this does. Everyone knows that I love Tiny 11 made by NT Dev. I haven't really met anything that can top it. Um, so hopefully this doesn't come with that much bloatware or anything. Because what's the point of having Tiny 11 if it comes with bloatware, right? Let's go ahead and wipe the virtual disk I have set up here and here we go we are now installing the OS alright and here we are on the desktop so as we can see the background here is that same red hued wallpaper that seems to be the theme here they like this to be red instead of blue like Windows 11 traditionally is there was no out-of-box experience it jumps straight into the desktop so we don't get that customization aspect but we can take a look at what we have pre-installed here so these are just shortcuts thankfully they're not actually applications um, of course, we have our recycle bin by default. We have this is the developer's name, Harboro Tech. I don't know why I was struggling to remember that. Um, we can open that. Uh, we have a link to this guy's YouTube channel. Um, of course, Microsoft Edge and their typical bloatware here. Um, the link takes you to sub confirmation, um, and here we can see his YouTube channel right here. Um, anyways, moving on from that. We also have their Discord server that we won't go into right now. Uh, we have an executable that will remove Microsoft Edge uh, in case you don't want Microsoft Edge installed. I'm going to keep it installed because I do like having Microsoft Edge on here so we can get to the internet. And we have a compressed drive.bat, which I'm assuming we need to run to actually get the full effect of this Tiny11 distro. So we can see right now this is our disk usage. We're probably using about 11.1 gigs. Let's go ahead and run this script as an administrator. And I want to compress the drive and let's see what happens. All right, and here we are. So now that once once the script has ran, which it has, let's go ahead and look at what's in it and then we can get back to looking at the operating system. So it is going to, let's see, kill explorer, change power configuration, set storage state, add registry keys, and then compact and then reboot. All right, pretty cool. So that's what's on the desktop. Down here in the taskbar, we can see that we have our widgets disabled and we cannot actually bring them back. It is just grayed out, probably because we're not activated. On the right side of the taskbar, we have VMware tools, which I installed. Uh, we have Bluetooth devices, Windows security that is recommending actions. We have our safely removed hardware, our network settings. Um, as you can see, this does appear to be 24H2 based on the fact we can scroll between pages here. And then we have our system time and our notification center here. Let's take a look here at our Windows security. It is recommending that we sign in with a Microsoft account, so no. Uh, we need to turn on browser control and turn on memory integrity. That's probably turned off because of all the modifications that had to be made, but in a production environment, these should really be on. On the taskbar, we have our start menu pinned, we have our search button pinned, and we have our file explorer pinned. And that is all we have. We can see the compression script got us down to using 6.2 gigabytes now, which is actually pretty good for Windows 11. Let's go back to that start menu and see what we see, which is nothing. There is nothing pinned by default. There is nothing recommended by default. Typically, we see like getting started by Microsoft in here, but that's not here. Um, also, because we didn't have the out-of-box experience, our username is just admin. I'm assuming that is a script that was ran. In our all apps, we can see we have accessibility our calculator, our camera, our character map, which is something I don't think I usually see get left, like especially in the start menu right there. Copilot, surprise that's still there. Uh, file assist or file explorer, 
get started Microsoft Edge and Microsoft Store paint notepad system settings snipping tool Windows backup security and system Windows tools not bad I mean there's definitely some things I would take out like copilot probably the Microsoft Store um, those are really the only two that really stick out to me. Windows Backup and Getting Started in a Perfect World, but I know those are pretty tightly integrated into Windows. Um, but, you know, overall pretty good. I'm really surprised at the fact that they were able to get it down to that much. Let's take a look at CPU and RAM usage. We can see that we're using typical Windows CPU usage, probably anywhere between 5 and 10%. And for RAM, we're using 1.1 of 2 gigs, which for Windows 11 really is not that bad. That leaves us with 900 megs to actually go out and do things, you know, browse the web. And as long as you don't have... 70 Chrome tabs open, that should be more than enough for you. Let's go ahead and open up settings and see what version of Windows we're actually running and see if we can update this version of Windows. Let's go down to about and we can see that we are running that's Windows 11 Pro 24 H2. So again, that is one of the latest versions of Windows 11, um, or the latest rather, um, that was installed on the 29th of November 2024. So this is this build or at least when they started working on this build, is over a month old at this point. So maybe it's not really 2025. Maybe this was a 2024 that they wanted to portray as 2025. Uh, moving down to Windows Update, because typically you cannot actually update Windows, we can see that updates are paused until December 27th, 2069, um, which is quite a long time. Uh, but we do have the option to resume the updates. The reason these developers pause the updates is because updates can either not work on custom OSs that really compress everything and remove core components of Windows, or they could break features of that OS, or they could just corrupt the operating system entirely because it's missing features that those updates require. So we'll go back to pausing the updates, or, well, we can't. It's also grayed out for some reason. Um, but we are now downloading updates, so hopefully nothing gets majorly broken here. So that being said, this is a brief overview of Tiny11 2025 edition. Definitely some things I would change, but overall this is nowhere near as bad as I thought it would be. Um, definitely keep them coming in the comments, guys. This was a viewer recommendation from one of my most recent videos. Keep recommending me operating systems you want me to take a look at on this, on this channel, because I will definitely make sure to take a look at them. So that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.